in the soil of my soul and like a garden and like a garden I will grow I will grow praise the Lord everybody amen why don't we all stand together aren't you glad to be back in the house of the Lord on a Sunday evening can we just start this service tonight with a good hand clap of praise Amen. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, come into this house ready to worship the Lord. Amen. I can't think of a better way to enter into the house of the Lord than the way he described it. He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. I want to enter into his gates tonight with thanksgiving. Amen. I wonder, we used to do something whenever I was younger. This could give me in trouble. But you know what? The church got here doing this kind of stuff. I think we can survive tonight by doing this. We used to do what we call popcorn testimony. Anybody remember that? We're just at the count of three. Just everybody just kind of gave praise to God. It's ordered chaos is what I call it. Uh, but here's what I want us to do. I'll give you a little moment to think about something that you're thankful for. And this is Thanksgiving month. that We got turkeys going on, hams going on, dressings. I've seen pictures of dressing today. And my goodness, I hope you had a late lunch because you're going to be hungry before church is over. Amen. But uh, I just wonder if you can just take just a moment, and I'm going to say one, two, three, and I just want you to just kind of forget about everybody else around you, and I just want you to holler out something that you're thankful for. Is that all right? Yeah. Everybody got something you're thankful for? Yeah. All right, on the count of three, we're going to try this. Amen. This is what you call on the fly, just kind of. You, but you can't go wrong giving thanks to God because he said in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. Amen. So I wonder one, two, three. Amen. Now right now can we just clap our hands and lift our voice a little bit more and worship him.
worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful that he didn't treat me like I've been treated on the playground before when playing sports or something and because maybe I didn't have the fastest run in time and get left on the fence, get called last. Amen. He doesn't call us last. He just calls us friend. Yeah. Amen. So whatever you have burdened you from your past or whatever you've been going through just recently, amen, we serve a God today, and you're in his presence, and he looks at you, and he says, friend, amen. If he can look at Judas after Judas has sold him out for 30 pieces of silver and go to him, and say, friend, amen. I don't think any of us can count ourselves out. Amen. If he hasn't counted us out, amen, we need to make sure that we're not counting ourselves out. We just need to go ahead and surrender and say, Lord, if you'll call me friend, I, I'll be your friend. Amen. Because I promise you, he wants to be your friend tonight. Amen. Whatever you have need of, whatever kind of life that you've come out of, I'm going to tell you, you are in the presence of a God tonight. That he just wants to call you friend. Amen. And I want to be a good friend, don't you? Amen. My, my, my. Isn't God so good? Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this evening. So good to have all of you here on a Sunday evening. Amen. Alicia, good to have you and your family back with us tonight. And I'll never forget Piper's name because Piper's got such a cool name. And I, I didn't see her this morning. I told her I was going to tease her next time I saw her. But it's so good to have them and their family back with us tonight. Amen. And uh, amen, all of our guests, thank you so much for being with us. And I just, I just wonder, uh, oh, Megan, good to have you with us tonight. Amen. I'm glad you're able to come tonight. Amen. I just wonder, uh, I know there's many needs, and uh, if some had to leave early this morning, and we mentioned again at the end of service, David and Pam Grooms, we are taking up an offering uh, tonight that anything that comes in, even if it's given after tonight, of course, we will. Uh, put it where you designate it, uh, but if you would like to be in prayer about what the Lord would lay on your heart to be a blessing to the groom's family uh, during this time of loss, they lost everything in a fire uh, Wednesday, and uh, we just believe in God's going to bring everything back bigger and better, amen, but we want to, I'm just thankful everybody's safe, they did lose some animals, but they are safe, and so we give God praise for that. And, uh, but, amen, I, I do believe that we can be the hands and the feet of Jesus in their situation. And uh, this, is, this is whenever, I don't want to be mistaken, but this is whenever you can really see the value of being connected to God's people. Amen. Amen. I, I don't see how people make it without the church. I really don't. Amen. It's just, it's something about being in a position where you know you have brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen, that have your back. Now, we know he's always got our back. But it just does something for you whenever you know your brother and your sister has your back. And amen. I, so I want us to demonstrate that to this family during this time. And uh, so just be in prayer about that. And if you want to designate that uh, before you leave and just drop it in our offering buckets back there, I want to make sure that they get that uh, tomorrow. And uh, I just I feel like we need to be a blessing to them. Uh, continue praying for Hilda McVeigh. I believe she's got surgery this week and uh, after an accident. I want to lift her up in prayer. Continue praying for the Bourne family. Uh, they had to have a service for Terry today, so we want to continue praying for them. Uh, the Cook family, continue praying for them. Pray for my wife and I. We'll be leaving in the morning real early, headed to Indiana. Uh, a great friend of ours killed in a uh, vehicle accident uh, this past week and his service is uh, viewing Monday and service Tuesday, and so be in prayer for us. We'll be traveling. Amen. Pray for that family. That God would keep his hand upon them. And uh, 48 years old. Amen. Just a uh, tragic, tragic accident. Let's believe God's going to minister to this family during this time, and we need to pray for that. Amen. Continue praying for these needs. Sister Shirley had a fall last night. Amen. Brother Bill was able to spend some time with her today, but she had some broken ribs and things. We want to continue praying for her. And uh, Brother Arliss, keep lifting him up in prayer. Brother Johnny Lindley had another fall last week, and we want to lift him up in prayer. 
uh, Sister Ellen Allen, and amen. I am so glad to see Sister Nichols here tonight. Amen. I, it just does my heart good. I know, amen, that she's probably in some pain sitting back there. Amen. But I'm just continuing to believe, Sister Elaine, that God's going to heal your body. Amen. We're going to pray for that. We're just going to believe it. Amen. And I just, I, but I appreciate you coming. Amen. Because I know, amen, it would be so easy just whenever you're hurting like that to, to stay at home. But thank you, Sister Elaine. God's going to honor I was going to honor that, and I believe that with all of my heart. If you have a need, would you just make it known by the lifting of your hand? Amen. So many needs. How many of you believe we serve a great big God, though? How many of you believe that he's bigger? Yeah. Man, Brother Jordan talked about it this morning. We need to start magnifying our God bigger than we're magnifying our problems. Amen. Magnify God to that problem instead of magnifying that problem to God. Amen. Can we just lift these needs up with faith right now? God, you are so good. God, we are casting these cares upon you because in our hands we are helpless. God, but if we give them to you, Lord, we know that you have all the answers. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to release those things. In the name of Jesus. God, right now, Lord, for that individual that may be holding on to some things, Lord, that they need to let go of. God, I pray right now. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would give them the strength and the courage to let go of that hurt, God. God, to let go of that pain, God, to let go of that addiction, Lord. We're trusting you right now that you're going to do a work in some lives tonight. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be sensitive to you in this service. God, that we would see a manifestation, Lord, of miracle signs and wonders, Lord, because your word says it will follow them that believe. God, I pray, Lord, that we would understand that we've got a transition tonight, Lord. God, from just believing, Lord, to becoming someone that would follow after you. Help us to follow after you in the way that we worship. Help us to follow after you, Lord, in the way that we release these things, Lord, that we're holding on to. In the name of Jesus. Come on, can we just lift our hands right now? Come on, Lord, I want your glory to surround me. I want your anointing to surround me. I want your presence to surround me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'd go ahead and make a decision. I'm removing everything that's in between me and God right now. God, I want to be close to you. I want to be close to you, oh God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Surround me, oh
receive that tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I know I can feel his presence in this place. Thank you, Lord, for visiting us tonight. One moment, he can change everything that's ever happened in your life. And that is where I belong. Take me to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you. You can make me like you, wrapped in your arms. tonight, Lord, wrap me in your arms. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you've ever been in a place you didn't feel safe, and then he brought you to a place where you could feel safe, amen, you got a reason to be thankful. This is what the psalmist said in Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. If we dwell in that place, he says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, the reason why that does something for me is because I remember that some of his disciples, when their shadow passed by some people, they was healed. Now, if a disciple's shadow passing by can heal somebody, you better believe I want to make sure that I will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. I want to make sure that I am right where I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God and Him will I trust. Surely. I say surely. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. Its truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Thou shalt not be afraid for the stuff that's going on in our world right now. Thou shalt not be afraid when everybody else is afraid, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in. I'm not afraid of the dark, and I'm not afraid of what's in the dark, nor of the destruction that wasteth at noonday. And here's why. Because a thousand is going to fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it's not going to come nigh to you. Church, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to go around with our heads down, acting like everything's falling around us. We need to go ahead and let faith arise in us. and lift. We talked about it this morning. Lift our heads back up. Understand there is a God involved in all of this. And God, I trust you. He said, only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. I don't, whenever you came to church today, I don't know where you were living at. Amen. But before you leave tonight, you need to make your mind up. God, I'm going to be living in you. I'm going to be living in your commandments. I'm going to be living in your word. I'm going to be living in your presence. Amen. I want my habitation to be wherever you are, God. There's not any evil going to befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. 
They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because, everybody say because, he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? You just need to go ahead and let the devil know that he's just joking. Amen. <laughs> well, come on. God's already given us victory over that joker. He's already given us victory over that devil. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's not going to come nigh to me. Amen. But I just listened to probably one of the best messages I've heard in a long time. I told Brother Tony today, I said, Brother Tony, you're going to have to send me the notes on that one. And uh, he said he would, so I might be preaching it. <laughs> Amen. But he's in a series right now called Soul Killers. And he made a statement while he was preaching. He talked about Paul and Paul talking about, you know, he had a thorn in his flesh. And uh, then he was preaching real fast. I didn't realize, I mean, I know he does now because I, I text him. I said, you got to get me that information. Uh, but he was preaching so fast. But he said this. He said, Paul did have a thorn in his flesh. And that it wasn't going away. It was there. But the thorn in his flesh was never allowed to be a thorn in his spirit. And I just wonder what the church would look like. If we would just say, God, I know I got some stuff going on in life. I know that everything's not perfect. And God, I've been kind of discouraged. And I've been kind of just pushed a little around a little bit with everything. Roller coaster ride of good and bad and good and bad and happy and sad and happy and sad. Amen. But Lord, this thorn in my flesh, I refuse to let it affect my spirit. If we would just have that determination tonight, I'm telling you, God... There is no telling what God can do. Even in this church service tonight, if we'll just say, God, I'm not letting anything going on in my flesh keep me from letting your spirit have its way in my life tonight. Amen. Because I'm telling you where the spirit of the Lord is, if you'll refuse to let what's in your flesh affect your spirit, God can do his will. His work can be had. My goodness, there is a... An anointing on this place. Amen. Uh, come on, we lift our hands right now. God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would help us. God, to be sensitive to you right now. Help us not to be ashamed to respond to what your spirit is calling out of your people tonight. In the name of Jesus. God, help us. <laughs> God, let there be a cry from our spirit, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are so good. You are so good. You are so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Remain standing if you will. Amen. I'm so thankful for what we're able to feel right now. Amen. We've got a ministry minute that we're going to move on and partake in. Brother Isaac is going to come share something with us tonight. Amen. I'm thankful for these young men that are willing to let the Lord use them. Amen. Come on up here, Brother Isaac. Amen. He had a little accident. Was it yesterday? Yesterday. And uh, just wasn't too at it this morning, but I'm glad he's able to be here tonight. Amen. And I want us to get behind this young man. Amen. Let's let the Lord speak to us through what he's laid on Brother Isaac's heart tonight. I'll be turning to Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know thou that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. All right. 
And my title to this is Bad Things Can Turn Into Good Things. Some th- sometimes when bad things happen, you may be seated. Sometimes when bad things happen, we don't see that something good can happen from it. Such as this. It didn't really do something bad to me, but kind of freaked mom and my dad out. Because I uh, came in running, and my dad sitting on the couch, and he saw it in my eyes, and he said, he went and grabbed the washcloth, and I had to go get stitches. So, But at the same time, I looked at it when we were coming home from the doctor that maybe God didn't want me doing what I was trying to do and stop me. And, you know, we have to trust God sometimes because he has us in his hands, as you know the song. When we mess up and go the wrong way, God can still help us and make it good. Sometimes when, sometimes it's, it's to, exte- um, to set an example for others. Sometimes it's to change others in a way to help them. Sometimes we have to trust God even though it, we don't see it. Even when we mess up and go the wrong way. God can still make us good for others. Oh, come on. I think we can do better. We just got some good stuff right there. Amen. I said we just got a good word right there. Come on now. Amen and amen. Great job, Brother Isaac. Amen. I'm going to say it again. We just got some good word. Praise God. My, my, my. And to know it's coming from one of our teenagers. Amen. God's got his hand on this next generation. Amen. I'm telling you, there is no telling what God's going to do through our youth and through our young adults for such a time as this. Amen. These Bible quizzes are starting to learn all these scriptures. The words just kind of getting into the hearts of the people, the young people. And amen. I'm just excited about what God's doing in our church. I'm excited to be a part of it, aren't you? Amen. I want to make some announcements. You can be seated if you like. Amen. Again, uh, don't forget this week we have midweek Bible study. And I would love to have you and your family here, maybe a guest, if you want to invite somebody to come with you. We'd love to have them with us here, adults in the sanctuary, and we'll be having Bible study here, and then our J. Crew children and C3 youth will be upstairs and uh, having their uh, respective services, and so uh, be sure uh, to be mindful of that. If you have any questions about that, or if you know of a child or a young person that needs a ride, uh, be sure to let Brother Tyler, Sister Katie know, and uh, we'll make sure to get arrangements made to pick them up, and the church said amen. Thursday night, Bible quiz and practice, and uh, amen, I know it was, this past week was a little uh, slim on Bible quizzers that came, amen, but those that came, I believe, got some good study time in, and, uh, but I want to encourage you, amen, be faithful to Bible quiz and practice, because it's about to get real. We got tournament season coming up at the first of the year, and uh, we want to make sure that we, you are prepared for that, and I think they've got a no through verse number 30. Is that right, Sister Tina, for Thursday night? And uh, there's several of them has already gotten through verse 20. And so we give God praise for that. And, but pray for these young men and women as they're studying these scriptures, that they can get it in their memorization and get it in their mind and get it in their heart. And uh, it'll help them uh, not just quiz at a tournament, but it'll help them be victorious in their living for God. Amen. And so, uh, again, I want to say thank you to all of you who are participating in the fundraising efforts that we're getting ready for tournaments at the first of the year. If you want a packet and you haven't already got one, uh, get with my wife, Sister Tina, and they will get that to you. And uh, so we are going to be ending this next Sunday, I believe. Next Sunday, all those packets have to be turned in. It's just a real quick fundraiser that we were doing, just kind of get a jump start on that. And so if you uh, don't have a packet but you want to order something, uh, be sure to get with somebody, and they will. I'm sure these quizzers will sell you all kind of stuff. But just for the record, the quizzing packet's got a little brown packet. It's a Cincy fundraiser, and uh, so no, I'm teasing. 
Praise God. Y'all are a tough crowd tonight. Uh, the week of Thanksgiving. I am seriously looking forward to this service. That Tuesday, the 24th, we're having a Thanksgiving singspiration. Now, this is for anybody. You just have to be signed up. And I think Brother Michael, somebody's already got a request for him to sing something. And uh, <laughs> y'all just don't know. During practice, I'm going to give him a hard time right now. During practice, Brother Michael's got a little solo going on back there. And so we're going to have to get him out of his shell a little bit and get him to sing a singspiration. How many of y'all would like to hear from Brother Michael next Tuesday? <laughs> Put him on the spot. No pressure or nothing. Just, uh, but we are seriously looking forward to that. We would love to have all of you here. Bring somebody with. We're going to have a great time uh, that night. Uh, it's a Tuesday night, November the 24th at 7 o'clock. And uh, that sign-up sheet, again, is in the foyer. We'd invite you to sign up or sign somebody else up. <clears throat> and we'll have a great time with it. Uh, again, looking ahead on the last Sunday of the month, we're going to be having our connect groups. And uh, I failed to mention this morning, I know there's several that still uh, are leery about maybe going uh, to a, a home or maybe getting with some others. Uh, so what we are going to do, uh, we're going to have a, one of our groups will be here at the church. And uh, so it, we will have all that information here at the church for you. So there'll be plenty of room to spread out. Because the purpose of us doing this is to allow for there to be some fellowship among your brothers and sisters. And uh, some come to church, and there, there might be people even here tonight that you're like, man, I wonder what their name is, or I wonder who they are. Um, and so this just gives us an opportunity to get a little closer as a church body. Amen. And so I want to encourage you to be a part of these groups. And again, if you're not comfortable going into a smaller setting, uh, we would invite you to come here to the church. There'll be plenty of room to spread out and uh, be similar to what you're here tonight in a church service. And so I want to make that available to you. And uh, again, this is it's not on an off night. It's on a Sunday night. You know, you say, well, I've got this going on, this going on. I promise you we understand busy schedules. And uh, so we taken a Sunday night a month to provide this opportunity. And so I want to encourage our church to take advantage of it. Amen. This is what I felt, uh, and I believe that it can help our church, amen, because we are, uh, I don't want to steal a politician's thing, but we are stronger together, amen, and, uh, and I, I do believe that, and so let's, let's do that, spend some time together, and, uh, and we will never go wrong fellowshipping together with God's people. There will be a Bible study on a, everybody will be doing the same thing during that time. It will be between five and seven, I think is what we said, five and seven. And then no, no later than that. And I want us to hold to that. We'll talk more to our group leaders about that. Uh, we don't want to, no matter where we are, where we are, and or how long we've been there, 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. We want to respect everybody's time. And I know kids got to go to school and all that good stuff. And so just be, be mindful of that as we get that started in just a couple of weeks. Saturday, December the 5th, again, we have work day for our men. We're going to be doing some uh, demolition work over at the family center upstairs. And I want to say thank you in advance for all of you who are going to help with that. Uh, just real quick, too, and I, I'm going to, next Sunday, we're going to show a video about what Christmas for Christ is all about. But I want to say thank you to this church family. There has already been over $3,500 of envelopes, and I know of another at least five to $800 that's going to be on top of that. Amen. So I'm just believing God. We're going to have a record Christmas for Christ offering for our church. I believe we're going to see that. It's not. Uh, and I, again, I'll show a video next week. But this, because of the closeness, and I, I'm actually the district secretary for North American Missions and uh, get to witness firsthand where your Christmas for Christ dollars go. As you can imagine, all these new churches that are out there during COVID. Uh, hit them a little harder. Some of them, their work, their places of worship, uh, they had to revamp and find something because a public place is being closed down. Uh, but we were able to, as a district, the headquarters sends things back as well. But just as a Mississippi district, we were able to send out thousands of dollars uh, to our church planners and evangelists. Uh, and so I'm thankful. And that's because of people in churches like ours uh, that give faithfully to this cause and uh, so, so much that it does for our church planners throughout the year, but especially during this season because of our district being a giving district and churches, again, like ours, being a giving church. 
it makes it possible for us to do what we do for our North American missionaries right here in Mississippi, as well as those across uh, North America. And so we give God praise for that. We support some of our uh, metro missionaries that fall under North American missions. And so um, I'm thankful that our church is able to do that. And our missions given has been staying great. It's been increasing, it looks like, sometimes. And so uh, and we've taken on extra missionaries this year amidst the pandemic. And we're able to do that because of your faithful and your giving. And so, again, I want to say thank you. Amen. Because there are some, that, and it's no stone being cast, but there's some that had to back up on their missions given. Our church didn't have to do that. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because I know those missionaries are dependent on that. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. I can't thank you enough. Amen. You know, we do what we have to do if it didn't come in, but God is faithful. Amen. So thank you to this church family for being faithful throughout this. And I'm telling you, God's going to bless it. We're already seeing it happen. God is blessing this church. And amen. I'm thankful to be a part of it. I'm, I said I'm thankful to be a part of Boonville First United Pentecostal Church. If you're thankful to be a part of a giving church, will you just give the Lord a hand clap of thanksgiving? And say, God, thank you. Come on, he didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. We are so, so blessed. Uh, offering buckets are in the back if you want to give in your weekly tithing and offering. Again, if you would like to give toward the groom's family uh, during this to help them out, any amount, big or small, uh, can be a blessing to them. And so don't say, well, my amount's not enough. No, I'm, I want to tell you, we're going to be able to give a good blessing to them from our church family. So, amen. I just want to thank you for willingness to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go the Lord and song.
together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. On this world is not my home. I am just a pilgrim passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue.
For you wear the victor's crown At the cross the work was done You were buried in the ground because he overcame you and I can overcome thank you Lord every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken uh, because you are the victor's crown thank you Jesus amen 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 thank you praise team for leading us in worship amen hasn't our praise team done a great job today and tonight leading us in worship amen all of our musicians and singers thank you so much for your sacrifice weekly in leading us and preparing to lead us. Amen. Let's see. Sister Victoria, stay out here for a moment. I don't want to embarrass her. Hasn't Sister, Sister Victoria been a blessing to our church this semester? Amen. She's one of our Northeast students that is here for a season, and, and she's finessed to go home for the break that they're going to have. This might, she might make it back here next Sunday, but just in case, I wanted us as a church body just to let her know how much we appreciate what she's done, the blessings she's been to our church that she's been here this semester. Thank you. Amen. We love you, Sister Victoria. Amen. But I didn't want to embarrass her, but I think the Bible talks about giving honor to whom honor is due. Amen. And I appreciate her willingness to, to be a part of our praise team while she's been here this semester in school, and she'll be back next semester. And uh, But we want to Amen. I pray that God's will will continue to be done in her life. And the church said, Amen. 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 Remain standing, if you will. Amen. We're going to go the word of the Lord. Brother Justin Robinson is going to come and share a word with us tonight. And uh, if he ate a bunch of that turkey that he brought me this morning, yesterday, I mean, they say that turkey makes you sleep. That's what they say. I know it makes you well, this won't go there. Amen. But I want to tell you, they brought me some of that turkey that they were eating. Amen. And that's just some good stuff. Amen. But I want to—I want Brother Justin to come and share with us a word that the Lord laid on his heart. Amen. Can we let him know how much we appreciate him and love him here at this church? All right. Y'all give that to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so thankful to be a part of a ministry team that's so uplifting and willing to to see the work of God being done. Uh, Y'all can go ahead and be seated. I have a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of groundwork as Brother Soden calls it to lay down. <laughs> I won't be long. I won't be long. Um, I've been studying in the book of Ezekiel, and uh, you want to talk about a book that is hard to understand uh, some of the things that are going all, on in there, but... Uh, of course, I don't know if y'all have one, but I have a concordance called the Billingsley Concordance. So anytime I have a question, I go to my Billingsley Concordance. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, again, I'm so thankful for uh, a church family that's willing to, to instill in this ministry team and help in any way they can. But um, um, what's easy to understand about Ezekiel is God is angry with Israel. Judah and Jerusalem and uh, he reminds 
Ezekiel quite a few times how rebellious they are. <laughs> and um, But God used Ezekiel to try and warn these three. For example, Ezekiel had to lay on his left side for 390 days. 390 days Ezekiel lay on his side. And then in chapter 4, he had to uh, uh, do it again. He laid another um, 40 days, I believe. I'm not, I, I forgot to write that down. Uh, <laughs> so don't, don't, we'll go through there and see. But you can read where Ezekiel was used to get their attention. You know, and uh, th this whole time I thought that, uh, that Ezekiel was warning them, hey, you know, y'all need to get your st your stuff right that you know you're going through some things and but uh it, it was also brought to my attention that the glory of God was leaving Israel and Judah and Jerusalem not a warning you know and, and up until uh, a few weeks ago I, I realized that and, and what stands out to me is is God's wrath I mean I, I'm I'm thankful for God's mercy I'm thankful for his grace that we don't have to go through what Israel and Judah and Jerusalem did um, and, uh, you know, that, that amazed me that God was that angry with them. But what amazed me the most is how Israel and Judah and Jerusalem just, you know, basically they turned their backs on God. They gave up, and uh, they began to follow idols. I don't know if they were discouraged or, or what they were going through, or if they just didn't want to worship God anymore. But at some point, they just gave up, you know, and uh, God was angry and he was wroth about that. You know, and on, um, on some occasions, he called these actions abomination. We know that's never good. Um, now, Ezekiel, being a prophet, was sent to warn these folks. You know, he, he laid on his side. He did these many things, different things. Um, uh, I think sometimes we can be, we can be compared to Judah in Israel and Jerusalem that, uh, you know, the glory of God hasn't left us yet. We're still under his grace. And uh, just like Ezekiel, we have, we have a pastor that, that comes before us that shows us, you know, and, hey, God's, God's warning you. You know, God's, God's showed me this for you. You know, you don't want to be to the point to where God can't work on you. Amen. And uh, I, would, I would like to read Ezekiel 37 now. Now that uh, I've done that, it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen a dry bone, and I've also seen a very dry bone. Now, if you've ever picked up a very dry bone, it's almost sometimes like you're picking up a piece of rotted wood that just crumbles, and then there's nothing. Um, and then in verse 3, he said, and he said unto me, y'all can be seated, y'all can be seated. <laughs> and he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? Now, I think between the beginning of Ezekiel up until now, like I said, I went to my concordance. My bill is looking at concordance. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been around eight years. You know, they've been through, through all this thing where the glory of the Lord has left. And uh, now he's trying to raise, you know, show this, this symbolism of raising up an army that has been dead, you know, that has... Um, Maybe given up on their promises. Maybe has given up on their walk with God. Maybe said, oh, you know what? I, I just, I don't think there's no more hope for me. I'm going to, they become very dry bones. But uh, in verse 3, he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, uh, and I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Now, Ezekiel knew that God could make these dry bones come to life. That's why he said, hey, I, 
Lord, thou knowest that thou can, can make them. But um, the, the next verse says, again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. So tonight, I, I, uh, the title of my message is, is Speak It. Now, if you read in Proverbs 18 and 21, it says there is power and there is death in the tongue. Now, God knew that these dry bones could come to life. Ezekiel said, well, thou knowest. God knows that those dry bones can come to life. God knows he has you in his hand. But, but what he's telling Ezekiel here is, hey, speak to these dry bones. Speak to your dead promises. Speak to the things in your life that has you down. Speak to that addiction and say, hey, to come to life tonight, dry bones. Uh, I don't know where you're at or what you've been through, but I know a God that says, hey, hey, I'm speaking to you tonight. You can be delivered. You can be healed. Those dry bones, that plan that God has for you, he can do it tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He can give you victory. He can give you deliverance. My God, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, can we give you some praise for a minute? <laughs> I want to thank him. I want to thank you for what he's done for me. I know from experience that he's delivered me. I know from experience that he's given me victory. And if he can use me, he can use you. If he can deliver me, he can deliver you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so thankful, God, for the anointing that is in this place tonight. And uh, I, I, don't have, I don't have a lot, but I, I know God wants to move in this place. I just want you to know tonight, that it doesn't matter what you're going through, what the situation is, that if you feel like you're you, those dry bones, if, if you look on in Ezekiel, he talks about the four winds coming in and filling those dry bones and putting them back together. It may, it may not happen overnight. You may not find what you're looking for overnight, but my God, he's, he's working on you. He'll put you together one piece at a time. He'll put that breath of God back in you. Oh, and if, if they can come to the music tonight, I want to open these altars. I don't, I don't know what somebody's going through tonight. I don't know what they're looking for, but I want you to know there's deliverance in Jesus' name. I want you to know that there's victory in Jesus' name. I want you to know that you can be delivered from that addiction. I want you to know that you can find salvation tonight. Oh, dry bones come to life tonight. Oh, speak victory to your situation. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we call on your name tonight. Oh, God, no matter what, no matter what, you can be put back together. Let the breath of God breathe on you tonight. Oh, hallelujah. I'm claiming my promise. God has 